Welcome fellow believers, followers, disciples, ministers of Christ, and to those seeking the Lord for another critical and timely message. This message and series is called, Is Jesus Your Pastor? This is a very critical word for the body of Christ. As ministers of God, it is our duty and responsibility before God to speak the truth with love, with patience, with great humility, with great sincerity and an uncorruptness of doctrine so that all men may be saved, becoming disciples, not of us or of our own methods or means, but our sufficiency as ministers is truly of God to accomplish what he said he would accomplish in our lives and in the ministry that he has counted us faithful that he has put us in and to fulfill all the good pleasure of his will and work of faith with power. And while many of Christ's ministers seek the good shepherd daily, even as Peter and the apostles who walked with him for three and a half years, but yet were, were, were rebuked for being mindful of the things of men, or of John the Baptist who was having second thoughts about Jesus while sitting in a prison cell. No man or minister of Christ is without their moments of doubt or being fearful or mindful of the things of this world and or things that would gratify their needs or even satisfy their earthly desires. Yet for those who come to hear the word of the Lord Jesus Christ through his ministers, especially his pastors, we have an obligation before the Lord to point all men to the Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, and not to ourselves. For we preach not ourselves, as Paul says, but Christ crucified. For Jesus is the bishop of all of our souls who seek to be justified by him, that is Jesus, saved from our destruction and tribulation coming on the earth and to those who are suffering tribulation. Jesus is the author and the perfecter of all of our faith, not only those who call him Lord, but to do the things which he says. I'd like to begin in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, where Paul, writing to the Ephesians, says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you would walk worthy of the calling where you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. You see, if we're in the body of Christ, there, there is not a divided message, there is not a divided doctrine, there's there is no difference of opinion. For, for if there be divisions among us, it must be that there are heresies among us, as the scripture says. You see, but we are one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. You see, so if you are a part of the body of Christ, this is the hope. Jesus Christ is the hope of glory, and he lives and abides with you, and he said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, even unto the uttermost parts of this earth, even unto the end of the world, unto the end of the age. He will never leave you, he will never forsake you. Verse 7, continuing on. But unto every one of us, grace is given to us according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he says, where he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. So Jesus has given gifts unto men. Now he that ascended, but what is he that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth first? But he that descended is the same who also ascended up above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he, Jesus, gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You see, the whole purpose of Jesus giving is the fivefold ministers of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, and teachers, is so that we would all become conformed to the image and likeness of who he is, and as these men, as these women, as these 
ministers of the Almighty are laying down their life, for there is neither Jew nor Gentile in Christ, for he has made us all to be one in him. You see, but we are those who are laying down our life to follow Jesus. You see, we're, we're not growing in the image and likeness of any man. Jesus said, unless a, unless a grain of wheat fall into the ground and, and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. You see, so if we're going to grow into the if we're going to grow into the image and likeness of Jesus, if the ministry that Jesus has given us as his ministers who he has counted faithful, putting us into the ministry, it isn't going to be coming from anything else but dying to the things that we would need to die from, that put away things of this natural world, to put away the message of this, this temporal world, and look not on the things which are seen, but on the things which are unseen. 